Hey everyone and welcome back to the final lesson in the Maggio trumpet technique. Um, it's been quite a quite a journey getting here and this video is probably easily a good few months uh, later than it should have been but enough of that in a different video and what we'll do is we'll get straight into Maggio lesson 10 chromatics. So in the lesson notes there is a little bit of information relating to what lesson 10 is all about like the rest of the lessons and it says lesson 10 chromatics warm up D is the recommended for the last exercise in this series it must be played in strict tempo with no variation in speed a nose breath in the middle of the phrase is permissible if necessary proceed as high as possible to double C B flat concert each day the purpose is not necessarily to become a high note player but to open up all of the registers so they may be played with ease a gradual rising of the tongue, a full airstream, and a fully closed, sorry, and a fully closed wet vibrating embrasure are the optimum results of Louis Maggio's principles. And then I'm guessing the next little section here, as well as obviously Carlton Macbeth's own input. At this point in the course, some of the students may still be scratching their heads in wonderment, but others will be playing far beyond their expectations. So I've not quite got there in terms of playing far beyond my expectations. But um, there has been some lovely developments, etc. So what we'll do now is we'll just jump on to the lesson and the few pointers at the beginning of the lesson. Okay, so chromatics. Proceed this lesson with warm-up D. Bang down the vowels and release abruptly in time. Concentrate on the airstream and syllable. Suggested metronome speed, 60 and increase daily. So I expect every one of those points, they're, they're pretty much self-explanatory. Um, if anyone has really gone into any of the technical attributes of really nice clean finger work etc. Then trying to be nice and slow and methodical, making sure that we do have a nice clean action on the valves is very very important otherwise we get sloppy scales we get scales that are faster in some areas as we're just using the first two valves we get our slow third finger etc all that type of things and, and that's why the metronome really really comes in quite handy i suppose there's no reason why you also can't triple tongue these exercises so it's a descending chromatic um run and then ascending over two octaves certainly initially and then you could also split up the patterns into four, so you could double tongue the exercise. I think the main thing, more than anything, and this goes for most of the Maggio system, is to approach with uh, consideration and really just trying to go for cleanliness as much as possible and articulation, be it slurred or tongued or compound tonguing, then trying to make sure that it's all nice and clean and accurate because remember this is when we practice we want this all to be absolutely perfect or as close to as possible when we take it into the real world okay so here we go let's get started in lesson 10 okay i have got my um offensively loud metronome going it's going to be going all the way through i do apologize um, i did try to do one of these with metronome running through um q base and i'm sure there's a simple way to do it with triggers etc but it was easy just having a separate metronome going anyway so my metronome is set to 80 um and yeah i'm just going to do the exercise as shown on the screen straight down we may jump through a couple so obviously i'll do the pedal work and then when we get into the reiterated pedal c motif etc we'll demonstrate that there is no change in this exercise in terms of how it's built until we get to our top G. So the first way we actually play this is from our C, so our bottom C down to our pedal C and then ascending two octaves back up to our third space C in the stave. And again, when we get to the F sharp, that's where we do the pedal C motif, okay? Here we go. <laughs> So, 
already we're on to our C sharp, so that's the A or I E um, syllable that we're going for. So A or I. Again, pronunciations, whatever works for you. But we've gone from the A ah position on the C. Obviously, we've come all the way through from the pedal register up to there. So we're already ascending into the first or the second, rather, of our uh, tongue syllables. This is D now. stop it it's really loud in my left ear <coughs> so now we're going on to our um, reiterated pedal c motif okay and this will stay in place all the way through every other section of this exercise now okay so sometimes the metronome matches up with the pedal c motif it's slow enough just now where i can manage it all the way through and i've got one <coughs> one thing to clarify as well i've got a little bit of a head cold just now so you might get some rather disgusting nose noises when I'm trying to take my nose breath, but I'm going to try and not take too much air in because that's an important lesson that we do have to learn in terms of how much air we need to basically play the trumpet and also play in the higher register. Okay, so here we go. So let's start off this noisy metronome again. So this is F sharp with the first of our pedal C motifs. <laughs> So obviously as well, we've transitioned around about the E-flat E area well into our E position now, okay? So that's the third of the tongue positions that we're on. And as we scroll forward, there's not really any change in the pattern of how we do our tongue position whatsoever. The only thing, and the notes allude to this as well, is like we are working on a gradual transition of our tongue position through our mouth in terms of trying to control the air speeds as we ascend through the registers. Another really good reason to do this, why we should do this, sorry, with the metronome. And also, really trying to think about a nice comfortable volume. I mean, I'm not blown particularly loud. I'm quite close to the microphone so that we've got a, a, a decent representation of the sound as we go on. But in terms of our tongue, it really still has to be able to deal with the air at any volume that we're working with. So, again, Maggio says about, um, it, what is it? it starts as a squeak, but it'll grow, baby, something like that. Well, that's can't be best paraphrasing. But in terms of trying to think about a manageable airstream, we still need to think about blowing through the instrument, okay, but not so much that we can't really control the speed of the air rather than the volume of the air, okay. So, uh, we'll do a couple more here and then we'll jump on a little bit ahead. First is G. flat
E. Okay, so we're starting to get close to our tongue position now, and that we are getting towards the ch type position there. So what we'll do now is we'll do one more here on our B, and then we'll jump ahead a couple. So we're starting to get towards the upper register. So this is B now. <laughs> Okay, next time we come in, we're going to be doing E flat. Okay, E flat. Yeah, so we're well and truly into the we're having our tongue in that forward position where we're really hopefully pushing against the compression that we can create in our mouth, behind our lips, etc. And with that little bit of support here. Again, it's not about blowing hard. We're not trying to like scream the walls down or anything. This is about playing these notes. Um, again, in the notes it says it's not about making you a high note player. It's about having access to the full range. And I feel that um, if you can fully control the compression and how you move around the instrument in a, a, a fluid and lyrical manner, then it's not about playing high, it's about how, how, how you can manage the musicality that you want to get out of your trumpet by being flexible and basically being in control of everything that comes out of this end of the instrument. Okay, so enough chat. I think we're on to F now. <laughs> Okay, so there we have the full exercise from our pedal C up to our top G. So we'll just turn the metronome off. And what happens after here is we have a slight variation in how we approach the chromatic scale. We take a five minute rest. Um, so I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about a couple of things that have changed and that this has realised or helped me realise 
about play. <clears throat> and there's a couple of things that I have heard externally to the Maggio system by looking at other techniques, techniques, and really just a lot of my own my own playing. Um, we are now in October 2021, so well over a year since I started this route with the Maggio, and um, we're kind of we're not quite entirely post COVID now or anything. We're still have uh, limitations and restrictions etc but the performing world is gradually opening up I've been doing quite a few gigs now and recording sessions since um, June July type time and with that there has been quite a few um, challenging types of types of music for me to, to get my teeth into so obviously I've been having to keep the practice up and coming back and forward in and out of the Maggio and looking at other types of exercises etc it's been really really interesting in the comparisons between what Maggio what we can learn from Maggio and also how we must and why we must have a very very varied and balanced practice routine and that practice routine as well it's not just about studies obviously it's not just about Arben, Clark, Schlossberg, Maggio etc it's about playing tunes and playing melodies etc and trying to think about our sound etc because coming out of lockdown and not really having a vehicle to actually play yeah lockdown recordings and stuff great but it's not the same as actually interacting with musicians and trying to get our sound out of the practice room or studio back into the performing arena it's been very very interesting so i would taken a lot of time to listen to myself and record not only through these videos but through myself so there's like there's a high maintenance from Gordon Goodwin video up on the channel that I did not long after I got this studio um, and listening back to that I say wow my, my sound has really really changed um, there's a lot of things within my playing that I will do I'll get to in a different video this is just really me filling my five minutes break between moving on to the next section there's a few things that I've done in my playing that have actually highlighted aspects of the Maggio that have allowed me to benefit more from the Maggio system okay and one of these things is aperture control aperture control and I've not really delved that much into it where I'm going to say that I am um, an expert on aperture control but what I have learned is that making sure that this part of the aperture where we are literally just touching and no more remains a nice focus controlled area and the muscles around here and obviously our airstream and our tongue position are allowed to work a little bit freer so basically um i've been playing i i've always been quite a loud open strong player and the aperture here has been a little bit too big so because the aperture has been too big everything else has had to work in a very very strong percussive type manner even though i could play relatively soft throughout my entire range etc what I've found is that when I wasn't playing, I don't want to say like like full out all the time. So let's say, let's say I was working on uh, a particularly mid register piece of music, improvising for example, where I'm not playing very very high and it's on the face a lot. It's getting very very tired here because I'm playing with quite an open setup. So learning to bring everything back together a little bit in the center. And my Joe actually says it in in the the lesson notes for this about having a compact closed vibrating patch is a good way that we talk about it now the actual aperture area not squashed together okay so that's the one thing we want to make sure not squashed together but in such a way that it's going to respond to everything else that's going on around us so when we're speeding up the airstream when we're supporting with the corners here etc and when we're supporting here if this is in the right place then everything should work no matter what register we're in so from your softest gentlest notes and be them fast notes or slow notes to your loudest most percussive notes be them high or low notes doesn't matter then everything should really really just respond so hopefully i'm going to come up with a video that's going to go into that in a little bit more detail but this module 10 exercise is a fantastic um example of how that should all come together playing from our pedal register this is module in general playing from our pedal register all the way to our highest note and total control is really what it's all about i was talking just just earlier in the video about trying to get the musicality musicality and lyricism out of the instrument as easily as possible I mean, that's really all it is it doesn't matter what it is you play 
if you can then really access everything that you want to see as easily as possible, then you don't have to find a way to see it. So it's not like you have to like switch on just to go into the upper register. Some people do, and it works great for them. They've got it knitted together. When I was playing, like I was saying, like like jazz stuff or, or stuff written in the middle register, I'm getting very tired here, maybe have to compensate in different ways. So that's what we're trying to do, is really just like try and find a way to make it as simple as possible. So everything's probably gone cold now, probably more than five minutes. Shut up and play, okay. So, excuse time, it was my youngest birthday yesterday, didn't play yesterday, didn't have a lot of playing on, on the day before, a relatively heavy weekend, so we'll see how we go. Again, it's not about register, we're going to use the metronome again here, the metronome for me really, really helps focus through the register where we're going. If we're playing this in a live situation, there's going to be time, unless you're doing like a cadenza, or... It's a solo and you've got time to get around things, but every one of these notes has to be in there. So we'll see what happens. A flat. Don't forget the pedal C motif. And I forgot. Let's switch that off. The exercise changes. We don't do the descending octave run now. So when we're going to go up, this section from our A flat to our A flat, we just start at our A flat on the stave. So we're actually going from our second space A flat on the stave, past the next A flat, and then up to the top A flat. And that's the way we continue on. Okay, so here we go again. <laughs> Gotta try that again. Trying to remain the trying to retain the focus and trying to think about where we're going to. All those notes before that A flat that didn't come out, they're all there. I know they're all there. So taking the time to go over it. And what we'll probably do is if it doesn't work with the metronome, I'll drop the metronome down a little bit slower so I can really think about putting each one of those notes through. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so a little bit more consideration, thinking of what I'm not thinking about what I'm doing, ensuring I'm driving the tongue just enough to give me something to push against in terms of the compression that's going on here, and actually trying to back off the air as much as possible. Okay. We might not get a I don't mind. right on the edge just trying to feel those notes just keep the air going without stopping and not blowing too hard that was one of the things I was talking about the aperture earlier on when you blow the air too hard pretty much the aperture from being nice and close together just goes poof and that's it the sound stops okay I don't really have many high hopes for B flat anyway here we go <laughs> Yeah, kind of, kind of. We'll maybe give it one more little try. Right in the edge of just steering where my tongue should be and the amount of air, which is too much, which is too little. And really just trying to think about just keeping this together, not squeezing it down together, but just trying to keep everything nice and focused. And that's all the way around the embouchure, all the way out here as well. Right. Let's do B, B flat one more time. I'd say 
that was kind of a cheat. The notes didn't sing out there properly and they didn't really go towards where they should have been. Anyway, so that is my dual lesson 10. Um, I think of all, all the Maggio exercises, it's, it's one of the better because it really does um, do that thing that a lot of us talk about in terms of stitching octaves together. There's not really much you can do in terms of moving your embouchure with your instrument on the face. And you really, really have to learn throughout the scale where you're going uh, how to move your tongue in those incremental areas combined with how much compression we're using etc there's a lot goes into it there are a few others that i think are, are hyper beneficial from the maggio uh, system and one of the things i intend on doing is trying to do um uh not a maggio quick fix but maybe like a suggested way to approach the maggio over a short amount of time. Now this has taken me over like 13, 14 months for various reasons to put it through. And if you are working through the Maggio system technique, then you're going to go at your own pace. You may you may find that only exercise one is what you need to give you a reference point for a pedal register or to work on your chops. You might decide that you want to do the full thing. And certainly the progressive nature of Maggio allows you to do that. I wouldn't say lesson 10 is the hardest but certainly in terms of having everything working together, I think that is probably a big part of why Lesson 10 is where it is. And it's not earlier on in the, in the, um, in the, in the approach in the system. So that's it really for now. Um, I'm just about to go on holiday. I'm going to try and get this edited as soon as possible. So... It doesn't really matter when I say I'm going to get it done by because when it's online, it's online. And all I can say is, is please, please, please hit the like button. Um, I've fought, caught myself doing this as well, watching fantastic videos and then either clicking back to go back to the menu or just clicking whatever and forgetting to click the like button. Please click the like button on this video. And if you have watched any of the other um, lesson videos, be it Maggio or some of the other stuff, click the like video on there. It really, really helps get the channel promoted and it really helps get a lot of this information out there and it starts a lot of nice conversations. I've had some fantastic conversations with people all over the world regarding the Maggio approach and how to use it and all of our different thoughts on it. So I'm not going to talk anymore. I will do some more talking in a different video and thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I can't believe that's Maggio Lesson 10 now recorded and in the bag. Just make sure everything's still recording. Yep, sound and video is still going. <coughs> and one call from the video, that's not bad. Okay, so stay safe folks out there. Stay smart, do your practice and hopefully we'll see each other very, very soon on a gig. Bye-bye.